Hey everyone, uh, <clears throat> just getting back to you. Um, finally been a couple weeks since I last posted. Um, and today is January 11th, 2013. Uh, it's a Friday and I am actually going in for my second surgery on Monday, January 14th, uh, 7.30 in the morning. I have to be there at six in the morning. <laughs> but at least I'm getting the surgeon's hands First case, so very fresh hands uh, on Monday morning. Um, but I wanted to talk a little bit <clears throat> more about the procedure. Um, this is my second surgery in a series of three. Um, and what's going to happen during this surgery is they're going to actually create what is called an IPAA, which stands for, uh, I have to even look for what it stands for, the ileal pouch anal anastomosis. So uh, to break that down, the ileal pouch means taking part of my ileum, which is another term for the small intestine. Um, the ileal pouch creating a pouch out of part of the small intestine. And then anal anastomosis is actually sewing that part of my small intestine into the anal canal area. Uh, I'm going to explain that a little bit more. Um, Another term for what I'm having created is called the ilioanal pouch or the J pouch. So if you hear that term out there, J pouch, uh, related to uh, colitis and colon cancer and things like that, um, it's the same thing, the IPAA, ilioanal pouch, or the J pouch. It's all one and the same. Um, I actually had my pre-op appointment uh, a couple days ago with my surgeon again and his nurse and I saw my ostomy nurse again. Um, so just let me give you a few, uh, a few things about the surgery. Uh, the surgeon said the length of time to do the procedure is, it is pretty variable per person, but he said figure on average about five hours. Um, and there are two ways to do this procedure, typically. One is what they call the staple method, and one is what they call the hand-sewn method. Now, for the staple method, uh, what they do is they go, and right now I still have my rectum attached. All they did last time in my last surgery was remove the colon and create my, uh, my stoma, which is the end of my small intestine coming out of my uh, abdominal wall to the bag to, to create the way or to, uh, to pick up the waste. So they left my rectum intact. This surgery, they'll remove the rectum. So um, I'm gonna use a crude diagram here. If you figure this fist is what they call the anal canal. Um, here would be sort of the outside uh, of your butt, if you will. Um, this is your anal area where your sphincter is and the muscles to control your, uh, your bowels so you can sense if you have to pass gas or if you have um, if you're having diarrhea or if you need to go to the bathroom. And then up here we'll say is your rectum. So in the staple method, what they do is they simply remove the rectum, they pull the small intestine uh, down, they create a pouch, and I'll show you a little bit more in depth with a model I have. Um, and they just <clears throat> attach the, small, the pouch of the small intestine, they attach it right to the top of the anal canal. And then they staple it and that's it. Now, because I have the primary sclerosing cholangitis or PSC, that other liver disease, and one of the main reasons I'm having this done is <clears throat> because my risk of colon cancer has skyrocketed by having the ulcerative colitis diagnosis and the liver disease. Um, in my case, what they're gonna do is the hand-sewn technique. And what that means is after they remove the rectum, there is still some rectal tissue inside like the top third of this anal canal. And that tissue is very similar to the colon tissue and can still be uh, receptive to colon cancer down the road. And since one of the reasons I'm having this all done is to get rid of that risk, what they'll do in my case is uh, the surgeon said they'll actually core out the inside of the anal canal, maybe that top third that has that similar rectal tissue, they'll actually core that out and get rid of all that tissue and those cells that are similar to the colon. 
Um, and then they bring the small intestine down and instead of a sewing that, the new pouch, right to the top, they actually insert it a little bit farther down into the anal canal and then the surgeon will hand sew all of that together. Um, so in my case, the surgeon has to work a little bit harder to pull the small intestine and I'm, I'm using this kind of a motion because in addition to the small intestine, there's all the mesentery, which is sort of the, uh, the blood flow and everything that's attached to the small intestine. They have to pull all that down even a little bit farther than normal in my case because they have to be able to insert it down into the anal canal a little bit. Um, he did say there really won't be, I won't feel a lot of pain internally related to that, which I found kind of interesting because I would think any stretching of tissues would cause a lot of discomfort inside, but he said uh, not really. Um, <clears throat> and one of the other big differences, having the hand-sewn method versus the staple method, is normally, he said, for the staple method, they would go in through the laparoscopic sites that I currently have for my last surgery, and then they would make another incision um, low down on my pelvis, sort of at the level or slightly below the pubic hairline, that would go uh, horizontally, sort of from hip bone towards hip bone. Not that wide, but I'm just saying horizontally. It would. I'm not sure how wide it would be, maybe, maybe about that big. Um, and so between the laparoscopic sites and that small incision, they'd be able to staple. Because in order to do the hand sew technique, the surgeon needs to have more room in there um, to do things and because there is your genitalia nerve there, your bladder nerves are there, it's very tight and small, he wants to have as much room to see what he's doing, which I'm fine with. Take all the room you need. <laughs> um, so in my case, instead of using the laparoscopic sites or doing a horizontal incision, what he's going to do is make an incision below my belly button vertically and down as low as he needs to go, he said he'll try and keep it as small as he can, but um, I'm assuming it's going to go to my pubic hairline, if not a little longer. Um, and this will be what they call an open procedure then. So that should give him room to get in and core out the anal canal and hand sew um, the J pouch into the anal canal and hopefully not bother any of my genital nerves or my bladder nerves. So, uh, my bladder nerve. Um, so afterwards, I'll have staples, and he said that's mainly going to be the big source of my discomfort uh, on this surgery, is the open lower abdominal incision. Um, because of that incision, because of the hand sewing, um, and the nerves that can be irritated, this is probably the hardest and biggest um, portion uh, surgery out of the three. Now some people do have, I've, I've met someone online, who actually had the first, my first surgery and what I'm having done in the second surgery, they had done in one surgery. And then they will go in the spring for the takedown surgery where they'll take down the ileostomy um, and, and use the J pouch. Um, I'm having mine done in three because I was on the steroids and the Remicade, which are immunosuppressive, which can compromise tissue healing abilities. And so my surgeon felt that uh, we give more time to my body being without those drugs, so the healing of the sewing of the J-Pouch to the anal canal can be optimal. So that's why I'm having this done in, into three separate procedures. Um, some of the risks involved are infection and bleeding, as with any surgery. Uh, because the genital nerves are down there, there can be issues for erectile dysfunction after surgery, uh, as well as issues um, with uh, urinating, uh, the nurse said, usually those tend to resolve, if there's problems, there may not be, um, as the swelling goes down and the trauma from surgery, if there were difficulties achieving an erection, that should go away. If there were difficulties urinating, that should go away. So hopefully we won't have any issues with that, um, but I will be monitoring that closely. Um, and then the nurse said also some other one other issue that can happen with my group, and when she said my group, she's referring to those that have had the hand, have the hand sewn technique as opposed to the staple technique. Um, sometimes after surgery, 
she said they can have leakage, and then she corrected herself and said not even leakage, but sometimes wetness um, of uh, a little bit of, of uh, the mucus or fluid leaking out of the, the anal area. She said usually at night when you're more relaxed, she said it's not to where you're staining the bed and things, but she said there can be a little bit of wetness associated with that because they think it's because of the trauma from the surgery. But then she said within nine weeks, the hand sewn technique group um, matches up with the staple technique group as far as that, that side effect or if you want to call it that, has been eliminated and, and there's no more leakage or wetness or anything. So um, it was good to at least hear that that's possible and that it will go away if that happens. Um, <clears throat> I think that was pretty much it as far as the discussions go. I'm just looking at my list of questions that I took in. Um, um, my output may be a little bit more watery this time because um, I'm starting to have an, an ileostomy but the ostomy will now be moved farther up along my small intestine so because it's moved up a little bit more it could be more watery because um, it's farther up in my digestion uh, digestive area and I think that's it so I'm gonna um, show you now my my crude uh, model that I came up with to explain to you exactly what's going on. So I have a piece of rubber tubing here and we're going to pretend that this is your small intestine. Um, obviously it's all twisted into your, your gut, um, if you will. But right now, um, we'll picture this is my abdominal wall. And right now, the end of my small intestine is sticking out of my abdominal wall just a little bit and then they folded it back on itself and uh, and sewed it to the skin. So this is pretty much my stoma right here and then the bag attaches to the outside. What they're going to do in this surgery is they're going to take my small intestine, the end of it, back inside my body and then what they're going to do with the end of my small intestine, I'm actually going to bring this up a little closer so you can see it. Um, they're going to take the end of my small intestine and fold it back on itself and um, sew it to itself. They'll actually cut out the center area here so this will actually become a pouch if you will and you can see where they get the name um, J pouch from. And so they sew that to itself and cut out the center membrane and then down at the very bottom picture this thing together, I know it's not, what they'll do is they'll cut this bottom part off, okay? And so if we picture this as my anal canal, what they've done is they've cored out the top third of that, they've taken all the remaining rectal tissue out, and the J pouch that they created and they cut a hole in the bottom, they then insert that down into the anal canal and they hand sew the small intestine into the anal canal. So this part that they sew together actually creates the new reservoir or the new colon, if you will, to hold the stool. And then your anus is still there, so it, it holds things in. And then when you need to uh, empty or go to the bathroom like normal, then it would just pass through um, just like normal. Then, because my, the end of my small intestine is now down here, they need to, while this heals, this has to heal for 12 weeks, so I will still have an ostomy, but instead of an end ileostomy that I was having, what they'll do is the new part of my small intestine that's passing by the already, the incision that I already have in my gut, where my current stoma is, they will put a cut, sort of like halfway through the small intestine, and then this part of the intestine will come out my abdominal wall. So you can kind of see, obviously, there's an upper and a lower because they cut it in half. But the waste will be coming out the upper part. So after you eat, it goes to your stomach. And then this will be attached to the bag. And that waste will go into the bag. And I'll still have the bag, like I said, for another 12 weeks. And things will go the same as far as that goes. 
but this uh, fitting here with the middle of my small intestine coming up, uh, sometimes it can be difficult to fit to get a good seal with the bag because this doesn't tend to protrude out of the abdomen as well as the end of the small intestine. So um, sometimes you have to do a different fitting of a bag and things like that. And when I'm in the hospital, uh, when we do my first bag change with my ostomy nurse, I'll make sure we get a video of the way the new stoma uh, is going to look because it's going to look a little bit different. Um, but pretty much that's it. Uh, and then after 12 weeks, when I go in for my third and final surgery, they'll take this down and all they'll do is they'll pull it back inside uh, my abdomen and then they sew this back up and then the waste will just normally go down into the J pouch and then I will pass stool normally, um, but a little bit more frequently. So that's pretty much in a nutshell, what I'm having done uh, on Monday. So <clears throat> I'm still off work for six weeks because of no lifting. Um, other than that, I think the process is going to be the same. It sh it'll probably be a little bit more painful because of the open incision. Um, but when I'm in the hospital, I still have to make sure that I can pee once they take the catheter out, make sure I can pee on my own. Uh, make sure that my bag has farted like last time. We gotta make sure the uh, the small bowel wakes up and that I'm eating solid foods before I leave and that my pain is under control. So those are pretty much the same things that I had to accomplish before I left last time. Uh, the one good thing is I'm already used to the bag and how to change the bag and empty the bag so I don't have to worry about that too much um, even though that'll change a little bit. Uh, on how that's going to happen, but, um, and then when I go for my pre-op for my third surgery, what they'll do is they'll basically stick a camera up inside and look at the anastomosis or the, the, uh, the part that they sewed together to make sure it's fully healed before I go in for my final surgery. So they'll check that out at my next pre-op, um, to make sure that everything is is going well. Oh, one other thing the nurse did say, um, the surgeon's nurse said, with the people who have the hand-sewn technique, sometimes they can develop what's called um, a stricture or a tightening where the, the pouch has been sewn into the anal canal and what they sometimes have to do is manually with the finger sometimes have to go in and stretch that out or in worst cases they have to take you in I think under anesthetic and use a device to stretch that open so you're able to pass stool. Again she said it doesn't happen for everyone but they do tend to see it more in people that have this hand sewn technique as opposed to people that have the staple technique. So um, obviously not something I want to have done, doesn't sound pleasant, but uh, what are you going to do? So. Um, I think I'm feeling pretty good about this one because I've already been through it. Um, I know it will be different though, I'm not going to have as much euphoria I think as I did last time with the uh, colon being gone and the colitis being out of me and then knowing I was getting off steroids and all that. Uh, I've already kind of adjusted to that so uh, feel like I might be a little bit more grumpy with this whole thing. Plus it's winter time in Chicago, so I'm going to be stuck in the house a little bit more. Um, but other than that, mentally, I, I think I'm ready for this. Um, it's been almost four months since my first surgery. And technically I only had to wait 12 weeks, but that would have put me at the beginning of December and I didn't want to mess up my holidays or anyone else's holidays. So that's why I pushed it another month into the new year. Um, however, after this surgery is done, I'll be off work six weeks, then I'll go to back to work for six weeks, which will put me right at 12 weeks, and I'm planning on having the final surgery where they take my ileostomy down and I get rid of the bag. I'm planning on having that in exactly 12 weeks <laughs> from Monday. So hopefully by April 8th, um, I'll start, I'm assuming I'm going to have like a bowel training program or something to start 
uh, learning how to teach my body how to stretch the J pouch a little bit so it can store stool so I'm not going to the bathroom as frequently and I'm sure there's going to be a whole learning curve uh, with with all of that uh, but um, like I said I think I'm at a pretty good place for the surgery now I had probably a week or two weeks pretty dark uh, outlook mentally um, it's just been within this past week that I've gotten to a really good place. Um, for those two weeks, I think I was feeling a little sorry for myself. Um, not sure I even wanted to go through all this with the uncertainty of everything and some of the possible other issues that can happen with this. Uh, just knowing where I'm at now, I'm happy, I'm comfortable with it. Um, so it was not a good two week period there. Um, but, you know, I had my partner and family and friends to talk to and stuff, so got through that. And like I said, this past week um, has been much better. I'm much more in the mode of, come on, let's just go, let's get this done. Uh, this is the hardest surgery, so after Monday it's done, I can start recuperating from it and, and we'll keep moving on. Um, but it's definitely a marathon, uh, not a sprint. So uh, that's what I keep trying to keep in my mind that this is, um, we're looking for the long term, you know, uh, by the time this is all done, what, September, October, November, December, January, February, March, April, it'll have been eight months. Um, you know, you're looking at three quarters of a year that this has been going on. So, um, I think that's about it. Um, I'll probably try and make a couple more videos in the hospital, maybe not as many as I did last time. Um, but definitely, I'll probably do one post-op. I'll probably do one with my first bag change so we can get a new a look at the new stoma. Um, and I think that's about it for now. So again, as always, if you have any questions on anything, please feel free to email me at ucandpsc at gmail.com. Uh, I'd be more than happy to answer questions um, if you have any uh, and I think that is it so next time we chat I will probably have already had this done I'm not sure I'm gonna make any more um, videos before that oh and one other awesome thing is the prep for this surgery because I no longer have a colon is just clear liquids the day before uh, surgery so no go lightly prep, no Miralax prep, none of that. I don't have to drink any awful tasting garbage. It's just clear liquids the whole day before, um, which is a big, big time bonus. So, <laughs> all right, uh, that's it. Take care. We'll talk to you sometime soon.